lives like well nourished plants. May our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to beautiful palaces. May our bonds be filled with crops of every kind. May the flocks in our fields multiply by the thousand, even tens of thousand. And may our oxen be loaded down with produce. May there be no enemy breaking through our walls, nor going into captivity, nor cries of alarm in our town square. Yes, joyful are those who live like this. Joyful indeed are those who God is the Lord. Amen. 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 We want to welcome the chief servant. Welcome, Dr. Bapo. Thank you, sir. Uh, wow. Thank you very much. Um, it's because I knew you still had um, Proverbs 11 to read. So you can do that quickly, and then I come in. Thank you. Can I read? Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Proverbs 11, a false balance and unrighteous dealing. I'm reading from Amplified Version. A false balance and unrighteous dealings are extremely offensive and shameful, shamefully sinful to the Lord. But I just wait is delight. When swelling and pride come, then emptiness and shame come also. But with the humble, those who are lowly, who have been pruned or chiseled by trial and renounced self are skillful and godly wisdom and soundness. The integrity of the upright shall guide them but the willful contractness and crookedness of the treacherous shall destroy them. Riches provide no security in any day of wrath and judgment, but righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with God delivers them from death. The righteousness of the blameless shall rectify and make plain their way and keep it straight, but the wicked shall fall by their own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright their rectitude in every area and re relation shall deliver them, but the treasurers shall be taken in their own iniquity and greedy desire. When the wicked man dies, his hope for the future perishes, and the expectation of the godless comes to nothing. The uncompromisingly righteous is delivered out of the trouble, and the wicked gets into it instead. With his mouth, the godless man destroy his neighbor, but through knowledge and the superior discernment shall the righteous be delivered. When it goes well with the uncompromisingly righteous, the city rejoices, but when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. By the blessings of the influence of the upright and God's favor because of them, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. He who belittles and despises his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding keeps silent. He who goes about as a teller reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy and faithful in spirit keeps the matter hidden. Where no wise guidance is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. He who becomes security for an outsider shall smart for it, but he who hates a surety ship is secure from its penalties. A gracious and a good woman wins honor for her husband, and a violent man wins riches, but a woman who hates righteousness is a throne of dishonor for him. The merciful, kind, and generous man benefits himself for his deeds return to bless him, but he who is cruel and callous to the to the ones of others brings on himself retribu retribution. The wicked man earns deceitful wages, but he who sows righteousness, moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and relation shall have a sure reward, permanent and satisfying. 
he who is steadfast in righteousness, uprightness and right standing with God attains to life, but he who pursues evil does it to his own death. They who are willfully contrary in heart are extremely disgusting and shamefully vile in the eyes of the Lord, but such as are blameless and wholehearted in their ways are his delight. Assuredly, I pray it, the wicked shall not go unpunished, but the multitude of the uncompromisingly righteous shall be delivered. As a ring of gold in a swine's knot, so is a fair woman who is without discretion. The desire of the, constant, cons the, desire of the righteous brings only good, but the expectation of the wicked brings wrath. There are no they are those who generously scatter abroad and yet increase more. They are those who withhold more than is fitting or what is justly due, but results only in want. The liberal person shall be enriched and he who waters shall himself be watered. The people curse him who holds back grain when the public needs it, but a blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells it. He who diligently seeks, God, seeks God's favor, but he who searches after evil, it shall come upon him. He who leans on trust in and is confident in his riches shall fall, but the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a green bough. He who troubles his own house shall inherit the wind, and the foolish shall be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the uncompromisingly righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures human lives for God as a fisher of men. He gathers and receives them for eternity. Behold, the uncompromisingly righteous shall be recompensed on earth. How much more the wicked and the sinner, and if the righteous are barely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the wicked? Thank you. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much, Sister Joy, and everybody else um, that has read Arlene and the rest of you. Uh, and all the others. What a glorious time to be alive in. What a day the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful to God that he's counted us worthy to be used as instruments in his hands. And this is the third training uh, session I don't know what happened today. Uh, we don't have as many people. Some people that I have had uh, some conversations with seem to have forgotten. They're saying that they didn't know there was a meeting today. Uh, but I thought at the last meeting we agreed that we'll continue on the 10th. So I'm between two things. To make this a time of unpacking further what we've already learned by letting people ask questions. Or go ahead and just, you know, dive into some of the deeper things pertaining to covenant today. Uh, so I would probably want to hear what one or two of you would say concerning this and then we'll move on from there Jörg, uh, Sharon and maybe Sabrina, others Kweku maybe I can hear from three, four of you what you believe and then maybe I might answer questions and so go ahead and teach or just use this time for answering questions, points of clarification areas of contribution etc etc so let me hear quickly because i don't know what happened to quite a number of people today 
If I may, in yes, my sir. opinion, I would prefer if you could continue the teaching. Um, those who are not here now will probably have the opportunity to listen to the recording, recordings. And I think even if we have some questions, we might uh, uh, profit from uh, going back and uh, listen to recording one and two. And well, now it's also the third one. So I'm opting for continuing the teaching part. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um... Let's hear the others quickly, please, so we can. Uh, sir, the, um, the comments are asking that we should continue the teaching. And as uh, Jorg said, we could give a little more time for questions at the end for clarification. Thank you. OK, so there have been a few comments already. A call. That is correct. Thank you. Sorry, uh, what did, um, was that quick or who was the one that spoke? Yes, I agree with Dr. Brown. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I take it that that's what everybody wants and we go ahead. Because I don't necessarily see what everybody has said. Uh, I've seen just one person's comment. Maybe some of the comments were directly to Sister Sharon. So, so out of that, with the, the understanding that that's what we want to do, and then we will go on from there and move on to whatever else needs to be done. Well, once again, welcome. Uh, I believe that we know that this is the new renewal of covenant training, teaching, and all that. And we need to ensure we understand it well enough to be able to renew the covenants. We started by looking at quite a few uh, scriptures particularly zeroing into Deuteronomy and Psalms. Psalm 89, Deuteronomy 29. I can actually probably uh, do a quick review of what we have already covered so far, and then we'll move on from there. Maybe that's the best way to ensure everybody is on the same page. That's not to say that everything we we're doing we have to go back and know but I just want to ensure that every one of us is on the same page so that will be beneficial even for those who may not have been here uh, when the first part was taken so we believe that you would by God's mercy and grace be able to catch up today with God helping us all right, so we're going to go ahead with that. So I'm trying to ensure that I go back to what we had covered, <coughs> excuse me, and quickly do a recap and then we'll move on from there. Probably in the recap, if you think there are areas that are not too clear, we could answer a question or two and then go on with the rest of it uh, pertaining to maybe things like the various specific actions that need to be taken on the days that we're renewing our covenants and stuff like that. Okay, I think I finally got it. So we will move on from there. With that 
sorted out and that we ensure that everybody is happy now with what is happening. All right. Um, can you see my Can you see my um, screen? No, did. No, sir. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, it should be coming up now. If not, let me start all over. It is what? Uh, your video is off. The video is off. Okay. So I will put on the video in a moment. Let me ensure that this aspect is sorted out so that then that which is the most important is dealt with and then you can have my video. That's not to say my video is not important, but I think you want to have the content before anything else, isn't it? So that's what I am talking about now. So it's not as if I'm saying what we are going to deal with is not important it is very important so we'll go ahead and see how the lord helps us with this i believe everyone can see no it's not come on yet what's happening Okay, here we go. I'm sure this time you will see. I might as well just go from the beginning. That makes things easier for everybody. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it's starting. It's coming. Yep. Excellent. Yes, Thank sir. God, Jesus. All right. To God be the glory. Okay. Let me see if I can give you what you were asking for also pertaining to the picture, which has to do with my video. Hopefully, it will be easy for us to have everything in place. Okay. Great. My picture should be coming on any moment from now. So, uh, oh, come on. Yep, okay, that settles it. I think I have too many things open on this computer, but it's okay. The most important thing is that everything is on now. So let's go ahead dive in see how much we can cover within the time that we have and leave some time behind uh let me start from the beginning start no that's not what i wanted we haven't gotten that far Oof. sorry about that we're going back to what we're dealing with and starting from the beginning. This is strange. Okay, finally. 
I believe we're there. So basically the first thing is just welcoming you again to the Global Altar Watch you know, training program. As you are already aware, the vision of this movement is we see a global team of kingdom leaders who embody and implement divine blueprints for global transformation. So it's a global team. And it's a team of kingdom leaders and these leaders embody divine blueprints and they also try to implement the same blueprints for global transformation so basically that's what we see that's what we are all gearing towards that's the end goal that is the picture of our end a global team of kingdom leaders that are an embodiment of divine blueprints and they're implementing the same blueprints from the very origin of God's original you know design and desire for the entire earth and that's what will bring about global transformation so in an attempt to do that we are out to build capacity for transformational change in the key spheres of society this is one of such you know efforts right now building capacity for transformational change and um, we are looking at using the key spheres of society namely family and future development where by god's mercy and grace foundational life values and virtues are being formed and developed the absence of these values could lead to vices so we're ensuring that even during our prayer times during renewal of covenant on a weekly basis uh, and I'm sure you listened to the first one that we did and that one we talked about what we will be doing going forward at the global altar watch uh, some people said they have listened to it three or four times which is very good because that was almost like the panoramic view now we're trying to break it down one by one so <clears throat> here when it comes to the time that you renew the covenant on your life, the renew, re renewing the covenant over your family, you will make sure that it's all about the foundational life values being restored and the virtues being restored, you know, so that there will be no vices, there will be more of virtues in our society, so that every nation that was earmarked by God to be a sheep nation will have the sheep beginning to draw everybody in in that direction <clears throat> excuse me so we also say that apart from the family and future development being the first sphere of society the second sphere is that of belief systems and the belief systems is where we are looking at family I mean at mindset transformation so where well views values and virtues are reinforced or promoted mindsets are being formed and transformed those are need transformation because a mindset is that fixed mental attitude that predetermines our response both to information and situations so it's like it doesn't matter what happens it doesn't matter what you hear doesn't matter what you see it doesn't matter what you taste your mindset will now be responsible for your interpretation so during the covenant renewal you're going to shape your minds back to the mind of Christ being realigned to the mind of Christ because we all do know that at the end of the day it is your heart and your mind that color whatever you see and hear and we know that from the scriptures very clearly Titus 115 from the Living Bible Titus 115 now let me move on so the third gate or third sphere of society is the sphere of governance and leadership where policies that run society are crafted including leadership development and followership sensitization for good and not for evil where you have dominion where you have rule where you have influence where you have 
impact being made from the kingdom of God through governance. Now, all of these will have the same thing. But I'm just saying here, because governance has to do with, you know, directing, uh, controlling, and regulating. That's why I'm using that. So policies are developed, they're crafted here, and all of that for the purpose of establishing the purpose of God in the society. Now, the next one, which is the fourth gate or sphere of society, is the one that has to do with economy and development policies and or projects. Now, you would notice that here resources of individuals, resources of families, resources of nations are harnessed. That's why you see in the pictures, you know, where you have solar, you have wind, you have other kinds of resources, including, you know, people now doing agriculture, using whatever is being pumped in terms of water, et cetera, et cetera, for the most strategic application for the common good of society. So during this period of renewal of covenants, we're going to renew the covenants of nations and the economies of nations economies of individuals, economies of families, economies of lineages, economies of ancestries. We want to renew those covenants so that that will be restored for the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth. Because when it comes to the kingdom of God being established, like Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, he said, your kingdom come. He said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Then verse 10 says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So renewal of covenant would automatically make the kingdom of God come in your personal life, in your family life, in your lineage, in your ancestry, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city, in your nation, on the continents, in the world at large. This is the purpose. This is the aim. This is what we are driving at with the renewal of covenant. Because like we know from the word renew, is make new again. The covenant, the original covenant God had with man. Now, the next one, which is the faith, education, training, and development, where the unique gifts and abilities of each member of society is drawn out for training, development, and deployment for the optimum and utmost good of man. So, you know, it's like through you and your family, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, will only be fully fulfilled when through education we can draw the king in you out. Because everyone is born a king, everyone is born a genius. But it requires training and development. And it's from educo first, drawing out, then having discovered and drawn it out, we will now help you develop it. And we train it in the direction it should go. And then it will be demonstrated by you in your society. And then we can deploy it to the rest of humanity for the utmost good of man. And of course, you know, the establishment of the kingdom of God. Everything is about the establishment of the kingdom of God. So I hope I'm not going too fast. If I am, please let me know. Uh, so you have the sixth one, sixth sphere, which has to do with the futuristic revolutionary science and technology. So we're talking about science and technology, but the futuristic aspect of it, the revolutionary aspect of it, because, for example, are you aware <laughs> that 80 to 90% of current medical practice has no scientific basis? Yes. According to a study, and there are several studies, you know, to that effect, but there was one by, you know, the Technology Center and all that of the United States I might have to give you the link later, uh, but if you want even a book on that, you can read the book by Lynn McTaggart on what doctors don't tell you about healthcare, etc., etc. 
that's not our topic today. Let me move on to this. Uh, the topic will be treated at the Futuristic Institute for Revolutionary Science and Technology. But let me go with this. I'm just saying that we are coming with revolutionary ideas, futuristic science and technology from God's perspective. Where does God want science to be? Not the one falsely called science, according to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, but the original. Where does God want that? How do we renew that? So this is where man discovers himself, knows himself, discovers and knows how things work. Then his origin and his environment. Then applies that to making and doing things. Because technology has to do with knowing how to do things, how to make things. So that it will live anywhere you go better than you met it. So during renewal of covenants, even for you personally, you, see, you should say from today, let every aspect of my life begin to reflect the original purpose of God. As I renew this covenant of my life, on this day of my birth, whatever was the original purpose of God for bringing me on the face of the earth, whatever I ought to know about myself, whatever I ought to understand concerning my origins, whatever I need to know concerning my environment, whatever I need to discover that is still covered, today I declare it opened up to me. Let my spirit be opened up to suck it in so that it can be properly unpacked for the purpose of application and, you know, proper release and deployment for the establishment of the kingdom of God. That portion that was assigned me, God will not be robbed of it. I will not fail God. I will fulfill his purpose in the name of the Lord Jesus. And from today, I receive clarity in the area of the things that I ought to know concerning my spirit, concerning my heart, concerning my mind, concerning my emotions, concerning my will, concerning my intellect, concerning my conscience, concerning my disposition, concerning my worldview, con concerning my mentality or mindset, concerning my perception, concerning my relational skills, concerning everything that has to do with understanding life and living. From today, I embrace that and I will be able to fully comprehend it so I know how to relate to life, how to relate to my environment, how to relate and how to make things, and how to do things to change my environment, to change anybody I come in contact with, how to speak according to the inspiration of the Almighty, how to relate to people, you know, so that's all in the area of science and technology. Don't let me, you know, spend so much time here. I guess I'm too much in a hurry to get to where I wanted to demonstrate some of the things. Anyway, so the seventh uh, sphere of society is the sphere of the media of communication. Maybe I should have just gone ahead and demonstrated how to pray with each one of them. But it's okay. We'll come to that. Um, you know. So you then have the media of communication, which is talking about the plural of medium you know, of communication. This is the information dissemination orientation and societal conscientization or awareness creation gate of the society. Let me break that down. So it is at this gate or sphere of society that you have information dissemination. Orientation and reorientation of people takes place through this gate. Then societal conscientization. Then creation of awareness for people, for anything you want to really get them to be aware of. Uh, and it's this gate that was used, for example, for the pl pandemic, you know, uh, COVID-19 and all the issues and that came. And people actually ended up with uh, what you call consent engineering and consent manufacturing. Um, people consented to do things that were usually things that they would easily have fought, uh, only to know later that, unfortunately, uh, most of the things you were told were not true. 
But anyway, what we're saying here is that during such renewal of covenant, for example, if I were praying on my day of birth, I would say on this day of birth that I came on the face of this earth and God's covenant with time, with people, with uh, and under time there is so much in terms of seasons, in terms of days, in terms of years, in terms of months, etc., etc. Let God's covenant with all of the time as I've just listed. Let God's covenant with man, humanity, generally, that relates to my being brought on the face of this earth, that portion that I'm supposed to bring to pass, that I'm supposed to ensure is in place and rightly positioned, be activated by my receiving the right kind of communication through all of the media of communication, any medium of communication that has been used to misinform me, miseducate me, today I declare its access shut out of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. As I renew the original covenant, because we're saying making new again that which was the original. As I renew the covenant over my life, let the original covenant of God with time, with people, with places, that means locations, be renewed pertaining to the area of information. Any information that each time segment and slot in my life, each season of my life is supposed to bring me in contact with, that is supposed to expose me to, I refuse to be denied of it. And I declare that my lineage, my ancestry will not be robbed of that. I declare that my community will not be robbed of that. I declare that my nation will not be robbed of that. You could use your city, your nation, your continent, you know, uh, our generation, etc., etc. I'm just trying to tell you that there is so much in each one of these spheres that you could use. So in terms of dissemination of information from my end, whatever blocks communication, because it's possible for me to speak and you don't even understand or you don't even hear me because there are all kinds of gates that have been used to sieve the information so you hear something different. All such gates I command, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors. Let the King of glory in me come in, in the information sphere right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever must come into my own information gates, be it the eyes, be it the ears, be it the nostrils, the mouth, any information gate, my, my touch, my feet, all of those things, you know, feelings, all that my heart and all the 12 gates of my uh, soul. Let all such be open to the right information. For the Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. So let that be according to God's original plan and purpose. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare reorientation of my heart, my mind, my emotions, my will, my intellect, my conscience, my disposition, my worldview, my mentality or mindset, my perception, my understanding, my relational skills, uh, through the information that will come. I declare reorientation right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as God passes any information through me, since he gave the word and great was the company of those that published it, let it be that there will be a reorientation and of the entire society and societal conscientization. And let there be a creation of an awareness of God, his kingdom, his purpose in and through my life. I was just giving the example of my life. It could be also for your family. Whatever your family was supposed to accomplish, all those things, we will take them one by one. Let me just go on because I just want you to see examples. Then the last gate, the eighth gate or sphere of society. So let me just quickly re recap, remind us. I said the first sphere was the family. And since we talk about the Global Altar Watch, eight gates of society, so we can call it also the first gate. 
second gate or sphere is the one that has to do with what the mindset and we say belief systems belief systems then third gate or sphere of society was the one that had to do with governance and leadership government governance and leadership then the fourth gate or sphere of society was the one that had to do with the aspect of economy and development policies and projects and we actually talked about your personal economy family economy etc etc then number five gate or sphere was the one that had to do with education training and development and we did say that the best being drawn out etc etc and being deployed okay then number six was the one that had to do with uh, futuristic revolutionary science and technology because we had just said revolutionary science and technology but I said to myself why not also make people look at it from God's perspective what is supposed to be the end goal the future that you know you are drawing into today and beginning to walk the walk you know in that direction taking steps towards that future that you see then number seven sphere or gate of the society that we're trying to ensure that we bring divine blueprints to transform our world uh, the society through is the one that had to do with the media communication the media communication that's the one i just end, uh, ended up praying giving you an example on uh, so then you have number eight now the art sports and cultural development art sports and cultural development uh, where innovative and interactive ways to transfer and transmit values principles and expressions are created so what are we talking about values principles expressions so we are creating interactive ways for a fit and versatile healthy and holistically rounded citizenry okay the purpose for all of this is to have a holistic citizen that is well rounded in every area and we will pass everything through that way so for example if i were praying just on my day of birth and renewing my covenant the covenant on my life i would say let every art whether it be music dance drama uh, uh, theater uh, uh, movies etc etc or the area of maybe painting um, the aspect of design whether it be uh, structural designs so architecture will come in there or fashion design on all that I, that everything that was supposed to come my way and whatever I'm supposed to pick up there to fulfill God's purpose in all of the arts from today I declare that you are called forth to come in my direction so that the music I must hear I would hear so that it will begin to prepare me to fulfill my God-given mission in life because there is a covenant over my life that is signed with time with people with places so everything that has to do with the arts according to the various time segments history current uh, you know uh, contemporary arts or things that have to do with the future i declare that whatever is supposed to be drawn from them whatever they are supposed to yield to me so i can fulfill my god-given mission is released right now so i will be able to fulfill that which is assigned me by God as his covenant portion, as his covenant redemptive purpose, redemptive call, redemptive deposit, redemptive endowment in my life for the entire humanity and the universe to begin to enjoy his covenant expressions through my life. As I interact, let the innovative ways of interaction that shall come from the arts and I've mentioned several arts and then sports I can go into the various kinds of sporting event events and even the aspect of just my being fit like a fiddle whatever type of exercise was meant for me that is customized by heaven 
I begin to ac access it right now. I embrace it right now. And I declare that it's exposed to me and I'm exposed to it. Whether the dragon likes it or not, I am gaining access to that now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare from today, there will be transmission of the right values through the sporting events. Any sporting event that is not helping the society that I need to change, that I need to speak into life so that they will begin to disconnect from, I declare from today, that is exposed as part of the renewal of my covenant so that the original that is supposed to be my contribution is brought in in the name of the lord jesus christ i declare from today whatever is supposed to be released that has to do with versatility uh, health uh, holistic expressions of my citizenship all are released through the sports that i either enjoy or engage in or i will be exposed to same thing, Lord, for the aspect of the culture. And the culture of the kingdom is transformation. So let the acculturation that must take place through me, first in my life and through my life, in any life, any you know, family, any group, any place, any particular you know, profession, any location, let the art uh, uh, and the sports, and particularly the acculturation aspect that should come out of all of these, the culture of heaven now beginning to take over and you know uh, uh, for lack of a better word replace all other cultures that might have been there that were not aligned to heaven let that be unveiled through me let that be birthed through me in the name of the lord jesus christ that i'll begin to fulfill god's purpose unfailingly in the name of the lord jesus christ amen well i better go back to the renewal of covenants uh, but I just wanted to ensure that even if we don't have mo much time left, because we said at most one and a half hours, at least you would have heard something that will enable you to ask questions. Uh, so you have the aspect of renewal of covenants. Well, we, uh, I already told you about Psalm 89 and Deuteronomy 29 that we read the last time. I hope you remember that. You can go back to listen to that. So the renewal of covenant, if it came to that, you should be able to talk about your body being the temple of the living God. So instead of the temple, you see the right hand, the top right hand corner of the screen. I hope everybody is still seeing the presentation. Please just confirm. No, sir. no, no sir. not yet. Excellent. So no presentation has been shown so far. No presentation? No, no sir. <laughs> oh, wow. It was excellent. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you were following whatever I was showing, speaking to. No. Okay. Not to worry. Um, Forgive me. I, I actually had started it and I thought everybody was seeing. I should have asked this question at the beginning when I restarted the presentation. Um, so let me go back quickly. Yo, was I thinking you were seeing all the beautiful slides? <laughs> <laughs> have mercy lord okay so this is where i started i said welcome and then i gave you the vision uh you can see the screen clearly now yes yes okay yes sir so I, I i that's what i was explaining about global team and the team is of kingdom leaders uh who are an embodiment of divine blueprints and they implement the same blueprints for global transformation and then i went to the next one which had to do with the mission therefore we want to build capacity for transformational change in the key spheres of society and is the spheres i started going to and i talked about family and future development 
and it was there I talked about the fact that this is where foundational life values and virtues are formed and developed and if they are not then we'll end up with vices and that's the reason why we see the society the way it is and I was going slowly that way then I realized hey, well, I run out of time so I started you know trying to pray with each sphere just giving you an example so the next one which was the second sphere was belief systems where well views values and virtues are reinforced or promoted and I say this is where mindsets are formed and transformed and I define mindset as that fixed mental attitude that predetermines you know your uh, interpretation and response to information and situations and then I, I, I try to pray with that a bit and then the governance and leadership aspect where policies that run society are crafted and I talked about governance having to do with directing controlling and regulating and then I came to this one the economy and development policies and all projects where the resources of individuals families and nations are harnessed or most strategic application for the common good of society. Please next time stop me because here I actually referred to this picture and I said that's why you see the aspect of you know solar energy with solar panels and then the windmills for energy production and then the water that is being pumped using solar energy in villages and different places where people now are able to you know, use water for irrigation, etc., etc. Okay, and then we prayed a bit with that. Then I came to education, training, and development, which is number, you know, five. Uh, that is where the unique gifts and abilities of each member of society is drawn out, which is educo, drawing out and leading out for training, development, and deployment for the optimum and utmost good of man. And you can see from the pictures, a military training, uh, training in the gym, and you know children running and enjoying themselves, all of that because we were drawing the best out, you know. And then I came to futuristic revolutionary science and technology, and I was talking of the fact that this is where there is discovery of yourself, and I I prayed a bit with this. Uh, discovering your origin, your environment, and then you know, knowing how to apply that so that you can make things and do things that will leave your environment always better than you met it or the people you come in contact with. Then I now came to the aspect of the media of communication. And I said this is the gate of the society or the sphere of society through which you have information dissemination uh, orientation and reorientation of society and then societal conscientization and creation of awareness of whatever it is you want to draw people's attention to and I prayed a bit with that then finally I came to this and said you know we had the eighth gate or sphere of society which had to do with the art sports and cultural development and I took the arts took the sports took the culture you know and I said the culture of the kingdom is transformation and then use that to pray so this is where I got to now I think uh, ooh, ooh. well we still have time to be able to ask questions anyway what I'm happy about is that at least I demonstrated how you could pray I, I think you know that should be at least something useful even if we have to ask a question or two, we might not have much time left. So I was just saying that you had seen this renewal of covenants, and we talked about Psalm 89 and the aspect of Deuteronomy 29. So this is where I got to now, and I was asking you whether you can see the right top right hand corner, you know, uh, that renewal of covenants. For example, on the day of my birth, I have to talk about my body as the temple in the light of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you know, from verse 14, and then chapter 6 from verse 13, all of that. So, 
you know, that becomes useful because then you renew the covenant in terms of rededicating, redevoting, recommitting your body as a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then you can also do other things like that. And then the aspect of your heart being the Ark of the Covenant, which is what you see to the, the right bottom corner of your screen. Uh, so that will be something that we'll have to probably revisit at the appropriate time. Let me just quickly uh, show you what I was talking about the last time, just in passing, that we need to remember there is a difference between covenant and contract. So we say covenants, according to Paul E. Palmer, you know, in the case of contracts, they engage the services of people, but covenants engage persons. So when you sign a contract, you can engage services. But when you are entering a covenant, cutting, that's what we call it actually, in the technical sense of it. When you cut a covenant, you engage your entire person. Whereas contracts are made for a stipulated period of time, covenants are forever. Now, contracts are witnessed usually by people with the state as guarantor, but in the case of covenants, they are witnessed by God, or whichever deity you happen to believe in, with God, the Godhead, as guarantor. Okay, and we see an example of that in you know Malachi chapter two verse thirteen to sixteen concerning the uh, marriage covenant. But since we are not necessarily talking about marriage covenant now, but when it comes to the day of your engagement, the day of your wedding or marriage, whether it was traditional, whatever you will need to renew covenants understanding the strength of the covenant more than anything else. Uh, whereas contracts are witnessed by people, the state has granted, I've already done that. So um, probably I better stop here because this would then take me into the specific, you know, area of teaching on covenants and showing you the difference between each part. Uh, let me stop here and take maybe two maximum three questions thank you sorry about that aspect of the sharing of screen that did not come earlier i didn't realize that my apologies i hope all the same you got something out of this and then we can go on now and answer questions comments points of clarification contribution Should I take it that there is no question? <laughs> We're still trying to digest what has been sh shared so far. I'm surprised. Usually, Colofello, uh, Sabrina would already have questions by now. But they seem to be quite quiet. Uh, by the way, the Malachi was 2, verse 13 to 16. 13 to 16. So, quick, we just correct that for them. But good job. At least you try to capture some things and type that out for them. Yeah, any question, comment, point of clarification, contribution? Jörg, anything? I'm still digesting. Okay. Interesting. Then it was a good thing that I did the revision today because I was going to go 
full throttle, but it's good. Uh, Sharon, Sharath, actually there are two Sharons, so both, Sharon Brown, Sharon Oladiji, okay, M-A-A, -A, go ahead. I suppose that's uh, Apostle Adele Farasin. So you got to unmute. All right. Um, yeah. Just for clarification, yes. um, the order in which you have put the uh, gates or mind motors of society yeah. seems to differ from the order in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Um, the Hittites, Gergeshites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were seven nations. Many okay. years ago, when I did the etymology of yeah. the different words, yeah. they arrived at uh, different things. I'm looking for my notes on the etymology that I did uh, some, some many years ago. So why uh, can you just give us or give me an explanation why you have put it in that order okay. and not um, in the order uh, that seems that Deuteronomy 7 uh, verse 1 to 2 suggests? First of all, when it comes to Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, as much as we could try to do applicatory type of interpretation of that, that was not necessarily God's arrangement. It was something that had to do with the peoples that God wanted them to take over from. The seven nations. Besides, we're talking about eight spheres of society here. That might take us even to the issue of seven mountains, which actually are from my little knowledge of Revelation chapter 17 and 18 in particular, uh, representing Babylon that was built on seven mountains. And then the mountain of the Lord's house is supposed to be the one that should take over everything. Uh, so when it comes to the about how many years would that be now? 1977, you know. So uh, that's about um, 25 or 35 years. Uh, that's 1977, 45 years. Wow, that's years. I didn't realize that. 45 years ago. So that is what I am working with in terms of the aspect of the Deuteronomy chapter 7. Uh, like you're saying, if you just want to go based on that, you would then probably be trying to say, well, uh, the names of the nations that were mentioned there came in the order that you might have thought should be arranged differently. Uh, we even pray based on, you know, the way we lumped two gates together, belief system and the aspect of, you know, economy and development policies on the seventh day. Then the first day becomes family, etc., etc. So on the global altar is not exactly that way. So in terms of Hittites, for example, that you were talking about. Uh, I was just trying to check the Hebrew Bible, you know, directly. It's Hitti that is actually written in Hebrew. And you're talking of the descendants of Heth, uh, which is where you had Machpelah and all those other places. Um, as to, you know, what was it about? Was it, you know, your personal insight into what was there? 
because of you know the whole thing about marriage and all that so you decided to make that first for family or the fact that you know that's where maybe you have to tell us how you came about you know the arrangement okay um the first nation he called the canaanites and canaanites actually means a merchant or trafficker yeah so well, and a merchant sorry means... sorry i'm sorry uh should we open to deuteronomy chapter seven yes because you know i will try and get it into the english translation but i went to the hebrew direct let me get it in the english yeah we're in english now so i'm okay. sharing the screen when the lord thy god shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and has cast out many nations before thee the hittites that's the first one that is mentioned and that's why i was saying the word that is used is hiti and then the gigashites then the Amorites, then the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. So in the okay. Bible, it's actually exactly this way. Okay, so Hittites, um, yes. like you said, the descendants were Heth, yeah. that were also called Cheth, when mm -hmm. you do the the etymology from the Strong's. And from Strong's, Cheth, um, which is the Hebrew word uh, 2845, actually means terror, which could be translated to military or government. Uh, well, um, again, I think probably is based on maybe we can have that discussion incidentally you'll be one of the people i'm sure you saw my missed calls uh you'll i was be one in of service the people taking this particular week of uh the fast so we can discuss before the issue of the fast sorry okay. for the rest of us online this is not dealing with the global altar watch is local stream foundation for the issue of such development that i'm talking about there but i'm just saying that I, I, we might have to engage out of this particular platform i have just put up the one that i am i was telling you i read from okay so this is what we were i was talking about because in fact is talking about the lord here and uh, here in the hebrew i don't know if you can see my cursor uh yod he vod he is the one they rather say uh, adonai but let me go straight to the aspect of where he say he is taking them into the land of the hittites is hiti that is used and from there now you go to the others so what he is talking about was a rearrangement of those particular names of the nations. So maybe we'll have to look at that much closer than you have looked at it. It's possible that's the revelation you received, but we just need to look at, you know, what should be at the end of the day. I don't know nope. if that helps me any shit. No problem. No problem. All right. No problem. So look at it off of this platform. Um, any other question? Okay, Kwekudaku, go ahead. Um, thank you, sir. From You're what welcome. you are giving us, I stand, does it mean that each family is supposed to identify um, a gate as a profession. Um, I give an example. If if the family is mathematicians, 
then it's likely that that is what they are redemptive. I could think about say Sonny. It's a family that that came out with the Sonny um, BMW, Mercedes, Samsung. Does it mean that with the Ecclesia, I have to identify an area, redemptive gift with the gate that um, that that is where the family redemptive gifts are. I don't know whether I'm making myself clear. Uh, not quite, but let me try and understand. Are you saying that your understanding of redemptive gift has to do with the profession? Yes, and the gate. Profession and gates. So let me understand. You're saying that you want to see if a family is called to, say, education, training, and development. Yeah. I see. Uh, well, let me put it this way. As much as, you know, there is possibility of some people being stronger in certain areas than others you could call it a dominant area of expression the redemptive gift is that which gives you influence over the rest of humanity to an extent so yes it might include that but it's not limited to that because if for example you talked about the aspect of education training and development uh, yes, but not everybody will be an educationist in that family. Yes. True or false? True. So in terms of skills and um, values that we were talking about earlier, that's why for me it is important what you are sharing because we talked about skills and values. You have kingdom skills, you have you know, soft skills before hard skills where now you're talking about the issues that will include professions, for example. But you start with the first aspect of motivator skills, then self-management skills, then uh, uh, transferable skills, then you know work content skills. So even for just hard skills, you have four different categories. So maybe we'll have to look at that you know, as we continue with this, especially remind me when we come to the gates themselves, because we're yet to pray with the gates in terms of renewal of covenant. I just gave you an example of my own life. If I were to be praying on the day of the week on which I was born, which is what we were trying to, you know, teach people because we're starting with the individual before you now come to the aspect of the family before you come to lineage, ancestry, on the day of the family, you can add that. Then you come to the aspect of community, city, and nation, we can lump them. Uh, so that's why we were talking about the day of independence and all that. Then, if that day happens to coincide with a particular gate of society, don't forget to also pray for that gate of society. So that's why we're doing the training on how to renew covenants of God with all of these. Does that make sense? So in terms of covenant of God with time, that will be generations, seasons, years, decades, millennia, you know, because for example, this decade is the decade of, you know what? The nature of the living creatures, the four living creatures. So things like that, you know, you can then with your understanding of times, then the covenant is renewed. If it came to the aspect of people, then you now begin to talk about the kinds of people, tribes, tongues, all of that. Then if it came to the aspect of, you know, location, places, then that would then include, you know, uh, various nations and all that. And under people, you could talk about groupings according to, you know, gates, of society, etc., etc. I hope that helps even before we get there. Yes, thank you. All right. There were two other hands. I see they have gone down. Is it that your questions have been answered, 
or you look at the fact that the time is gone? I, I'm looking at the fact that the time is gone concerning the question of um, redemptive gifts. But, uh, but you can make a comment, please. Okay, so, so I, I, one of my fortes is teaching redemptive gifts. Um, Romans chapter 12, 12 verses the gift of the, the, yeah, the prophet, the, the, the um, servant, the teacher, the um, exhorter, the ruler, um, the giver, the mercy gift. And Sorry, uh, is Romans 12, verses 6 to 9. Please go ahead. Sorry about that. Okay. So in, in all the studies that I've done over the years, um, we find out that your redemptive gift also defines the gate of society that you may fall into. For instance, uh, the teacher gift you find, or let me use the mercy gift. Mother Teresa was a mercy gift. So she was into a lot of philanthropy and so on and so forth. A lot of people with the mercy gifts go into caregiving um, professions, um, doctors, nurses, and so on and so forth, because those gifts operate out of compassion. The ruler gift, such as was Joseph, uh, was administration and uh, the primary gift, that is, was administration, organization, and so on and so forth. So we find him organizing and administrating over the prison system, over Potiphar's house, over the prison systems, over Egypt. So we find that every redemptive gift of an individual uh, correlates with um, certain skill sets and giftings, both manifestation giftings, ministry giftings, natural abilities that define the gate of society that the person may uh, derive most fulfillment from because most of our work should bring us fulfillment and not just uh, like you say we we eat to work and not work to eat basically so i think that's where kweku was brother kweku was coming from and that's what i've always basically taught so it's an issue of merging what the the two viewpoints together okay thank you very much i would say it's excellent input uh he was talking about an entire family Kweku, is that correct uh, um apostle the way apostle explained that's what i wanted to okay but, so then you said family yes. so that was a little different because if, we're talking of individuals. Go if, ahead. If I might add, families yeah. have um, re also redemptive giftings. So I find, for example, in my family, my father was very invested in justice and righteousness. So that's a strain that runs through all of us. Um, so we know that families also have redemptive giftings businesses have redemptive giftings as you know obviously nations have redemptive giftings all right cities have, think... so, <laughs> so that's why i, I didn't think... want to get into this here <laughs> yeah i think i think um apostle adeforas and i was ending it by just saying you've done an excellent <laughs> job it's not it's not perspectives is the fact that it appears both of you are taking portions if it came to compassion, Jesus had compassion. That's where we're all going, true or false. Well, he was all things to all men. So he operated in all the redemptive giftings. Excellent. <laughs> and where are we all supposed to be going? That's why I said that there might be areas that you will call primary expression, maybe a dominant expression. But that's not the only thing. You and I know that when it comes to redemptive gifts and some of the issues, your friend, uh, Fifi Pencil, said to me at some point, if 
he hadn't known us separately. That is myself and what's the name of the man again? Um, in, Arthur Burke. Yes, Arthur Burke. He would have thought that either Arthur Burke copied me or I copied him. But he knows we have never met. Up till today, I have never met him. I don't know. So all I was saying, and I want to reiterate, everything you have said is very important, is in line. Whatever Kweku says he agrees with is very much in line. All I said earlier was that don't limit yourself to that one area. You can start from there because there is a dominant expression and other expressions. Personally, I don't limit myself to one area because the holistic citizen, well-rounded citizen that I talked about earlier, when we get into that, you will see where I was coming from. So I am not saying there is no value in what you have said. I have agreed 100%. There is every value in it. However, let's not limit it to just that one area because we might end up with a situation where somebody now says, okay, but I see myself or our family operating in three or four. So what happens? That almost happened to me. Maybe that's why I am <laughs> very strong on these things. When I started, people were saying, so which gift is it? Is it healings or miracles or what? Ah, are you operating in all the 12 gifts? Honestly, as much as I try to learn about the 12 manifestations of the spirit, you know, out of the nine first, and then you have the other three towards the end of that first Corinthians chapter 12, as much as I thank God that I learned about that later, that wasn't my focus. I was just trying to meet needs. And I availed myself to God to be used. So that would be my counsel. But it does not, and I repeat, it does not, third time, it does not take away from the value of what you're teaching. All I'm saying is that let's remember that the holistic, you know, would include all of these. Because just like you talked about the mercy, and then you came to the aspect of justice, righteousness and justice. There is nobody in the body of Christ that should not operate from the perspective of, perspective of righteousness and justice. But some will be more vested there than others. So I hope I am clear enough in terms of dominant expressions. Uh, so we are on the same side, not uh, different sides. Apostle Adeferasin. <laughs> I hope it's okay with you. It is so well. We can... <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, as much as I would love for us to continue, I can see Honor Fellow now has her hand up. Uh, our time is really, really gone. If I take it, this will be the last, the very last one. Is that okay with everybody, please? Take it, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Hello, fellow. Go ahead. Uh, so I have a question around around your your contribution around not limiting yourself to a particular area. Because the scriptures does say that the body has multiple parts that are fitly joined together. Yes. And with different functions so if i understand that there's there's um dominant expressions and then that that people will 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 tend to gravitate towards but if we're all aiming for well rounding how do we still maintain the uniqueness of being different as well i don't know if my question is making sense um i would have to probably understand the question better reason being that for example the way you speak is different from any other person that i know so far true or false that is true yes sir. certainly that doesn't change the fact that you could be all rounded but the way you present any of the aspects 
will still be unique to you. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. I say purpose because of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 and all the other scriptures. With all your you know, soul, talking about your uniqueness, the seat of your personality, etc., etc. With all your strength, talking about value of hard work, the might of God, health, and all that with all your mind or intellect which has to do with ability to create things including systems and all of that it, that's just like applicatory you know uh, interpretation of that scripture is not necessarily the only way you can interpret that Luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 28 which is what I was saying now if it came to the aspect of First Corinthians chapter 12, incidentally, that I just ended up with. You are right. Like I said earlier, concerning Apostle Adephorazin's, you know, uh, contribution, that he is right. If it came to the issue of redemptive gifts, including some of the things that Arthur Burke has taught, we might not have approached things exactly from the same direction. But according to you know, the person I mentioned, Fifi Pencil, he sees that we are teaching quite a few things that are similar, and it will almost look like somebody read the other person before, but he knows we don't know each other. Up till today, we haven't met. And what I'm talking about was sometime to probably the year 2000, 2003, later as 2005, he talked about this. So, however, that said, all the same, we might be teaching similar things, but from two different directions. Apostle Adephorasim, by the mercies of God, is somebody that I was privileged to at least uh, sow a bit into his life as he was growing in Christ. But we will not teach exactly the same thing because we are different. We might teach in the same area, rounded. Does that make sense? well-rounded but it might not be exactly the same thing hence yes. even the demonstration of what you've heard today so in terms of rounded i'm trying to gear us towards where we're going ultimately because we'll be headed up in christ and we'll come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ in the same passage of ephesians chapter 4 that you're quoting verse 16 from. Verse 16 came after verse 15. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, sir. Thank you so much. So I am not against what any one of you has said. <laughs> all I'm saying is, let's all go until we be conformed to the image of the Son. That's the purpose of everything we're doing for every individual, for every family for every congregation that's all i'm saying i am not in any shape or form by any stretch of anyone's imagination saying you don't have to have a uniqueness in your own specific contribution no no i didn't say that all i said was that you should be well rounded in terms of the aspect of redemptive gifts, if you want to take it, you will actually say, for example, redemptive gifts is our coinage based on our revelation. True or false? Hello, fellow. Is it written redemptive gifts? In Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 9? or any of the other passages because it's not just that one but that's the main one most people use maybe apostle can help you no it's not it's not written redemptive gifts we have coined various terms redemptive gifts birthright gifts or motivational gifts excellent so it is based on our revelation, our understanding, and I am the first person to admit in the light of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 
we know in part, we prophesy in part. In part. Yes, so it is that that has made me as I grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to be the first person to accept that there is more. And the common saying that people identify me with is the largest room in the universe is the room for improvement. It will be foolhardiness on my part to say that I won't learn from Apostle Adepharacin or, you know, from uh, Holofelo or from, you know, Kweku or Yerg. It doesn't matter how little because I'll be robbing myself and probably the rest of the body if I don't get that little bit that Colofello's question was talking about. The whole body is supposed to be fitly joined and compacted together by that which every joint supplies as each part works in the measure of that part. So if you want to further study on that, uh, Sister Colofello, and anybody else, especially in the light of that Ephesians chapter 4, you can take Ephesians 4 verses 7 to 16. In fact, I would say you should go beyond up to verse 19 because there are some very interesting things that are said after. But anyway, let me stop there so that I don't go far and wide. Um, I hope somebody got something out of tonight's meeting and it just tells us that there is so much on this platform that needs to be unleashed. So very soon, like I said from the very beginning, that we're going to end up having to, you know, uh, have others teach. So it's not just one person, because it will be very useful to have all the perspectives come in, because they would even help you. Maybe you will find a particular perspective more readily, you know, uh, useful because you can readily identify with that and start from that end and we'll finally meet each other somewhere along the line. All right. Shalom to you. Thank you for the privilege of your time, your attention, your presence. You could have used this time for any other thing, but you chose to be here. I don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted as the Global Altar Watch leadership, which is the reason why you see I was asking people to make contributions, and you heard, you know, uh, Apostle Adefarasin, for example, make a contribution, and one or two others also just make a comment, and then the questions. Uh, thank you very much. Shalom to you all. I hand over to those who are supposed to uh, make any announcements. Um, if we say exactly two weeks from today. First of all, let me ask this question. Would this day be a better day than the sixth day of the week or you prefer the sixth day of the week? Because it appears less number of people came today than, you know, the other time. Or was it the information that was a challenge? I see Hannah believes this is better. Okay, those who believe today is better than, you know, if we were to do it like yesterday, please indicate by show of hands so we can go on. Can I offer another uh, suggestion? Yes, Gabriel, go ahead. That we alternate and then we compare. We have two comparisons now. Friday and Saturday, we see the numbers. We go back to Friday, we see the numbers. We go back to Saturday, we see the numbers. I will now make, we have some numbers to work with. And then we make the call based on the highest number of attendance. Uh, <laughs> That's the mathematical <laughs> way of doing it. <laughs> we might end up with the challenge because it's the consistency <laughs> that will help us build People got used to the sixth day of the week, otherwise known as Friday. 
and we had actually said the ninth then at a particular meeting of the key leaders it was said that you know some people are working on the sixth day of the week why don't we put it on the seventh day because even for those in australia and new zealand uh except for the people in new zealand who it might be just getting to time for them to go for their meetings uh, congregational meetings their services on the first day of the week because they are 12 hours ahead of us um, the rest of the people it is good for them because they are not working so we decided mm. okay so let's move it to the seventh day and based on that then it was said the 10th so the change from the 10th i believe uh, sister sharon sent a message out for people to be informed uh, i guess not everybody read their messages hence this challenge but mm. if you think the sixth day is better we can revert to that then we'll fix two weeks from today's sixth day of the week mm -hmm. so let's see by show of hands otherwise was uh apostle adefrasin going to say something go ahead well, well my vote is for this the first day of the week uh the first day of the week which is today yeah. yes okay I, I get your point biblically yes. we've entered the first day of the week okay I hear and you. the only adjustment that i prayed that we might be able to consider is a 30 minutes adjustment because i have my end of week service i have meetings on the sixth day of the week and on the seventh day of the week i came in late because i our service finished a little bit late so and then it takes me about a 15 minute 20 minute drive to get home and that's why i was late so if we adjusted the time by 30 minutes it would be ideal for me but then i'm just one person out of many but okay. this day the, the first day of the week also known as saturday night is better i think okay so you will prefer today Okay, so we might as well just go on with the aspect of the voting and we finalize and then we'll move on from there. The thing here is that another alternative is to reduce the number of meetings from every fortnight to once a month and then your challenge will be resolved in the sense that, mm. you know, you will then ensure that that once a month you know, you actually get somebody to step in for you and you come at seven like everybody else because this was the challenge with people in East Africa. They said, you know, it's taking them too late and some of the people that were supposed to be joining from places like Dubai, they have not even joined because it is starting at 11 for them, even at 7 p.m. If we go two hours, you know, uh, that's already 1 a.m. for them. Now, anything beyond that is actually taking it further and further. So, for a global so, so again, thing, it, it's not that easy. <laughs> again, I start then. Is 30, 30 of us, are we a good representative number to do a vote? I, I like your question. Uh, those who voted, you know, for either one of the two days in the first place were, were just about 12 or 14 people. <laughs> so I like what uh, Nima is talking about. Some of them that are in North America, if we went on the sixth day, it will affect them because it is during the day for them, right? Is, did I get yeah. you correctly, please? Yes, okay, she's just typed, yes. So she's also just like Apostle Adepharacin trying to appeal, though she's one person. That's why I said, let's just go ahead and vote. Otherwise, we are going to have, you know, this go on and on. 
now we have gone extra 30 minutes as against the time we had set you know for ourselves one and a half hours can yeah. we quickly you know just vote uh some of you had voted i'm um, lower your hands i'm sorry about that vote again so that we know for sure you know the numbers because we do know that we're about 30 people 29 people left now maybe one person has dropped out so that if we have is more voting half, for friday or saturday this is the seventh day of the week otherwise known as saturday which is what somebody was making a, a, a very strong case for that she's in canada and she's at work uh, so mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean we have to go her way but she's just appealing which was the reason why like i said it was people who were working during those particular days of the week that the sixth day of the week that I had said that so out of 29 we have only 13 14 still not yet you know oh, well. okay excellent we have is that for, for for seventh day of the week yes seventh day of the week yes seventh day of the week this is seventh day of the week we are we're voting for okay all right we actually have majority now we have up to 16 people uh Shuren says either day is okay for me so your vote can go also for the seventh day okay mm -hmm. so seven uh, i i i am dead i vote for friday <laughs> <laughs> okay all right no challenge at least you are the dissenting voice uh, <laughs> are there people who want to Okay, lower your hands. We have 17 people that have voted for the you know, seventh day. Lower your hands. Any vote for the sixth day of the week? Just for, you know, righteousness and justice sake. <laughs> okay. Vote for the sixth day of the week. Oh, Gabriel, what happened to you? We don't see your hand. Okay, so that's one hand. Any other hands for the sixth day of the week? Okay, you are on your own. That's what they <laughs> All right. Call <laughs> All right. Uh, we thank God for every one of you. Sorry we had to do this so that we can be sure. So um, for now, we will do the two weeks from now, after which we will have to do monthly to see maybe the monthly will have better attendance or do you want us to try the monthly let me hear from you the two is fine. uh apostle adefrasen no i think the bi uh, uh bi-monthly is better every two weeks because there's a lot of information that has to be digested once a month would not allow us to get all the information that we need to digest and absorb and apply. Okay. All right. Is that what everybody agrees with? Just say yes so we know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. This is my, uh, this is my hand yes. for that. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So be it. For me, it's more work, but that's okay for me. I just want to be sure there is maximum participation. All right. Thank you, everybody. Any uh, 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 announcements? So two weeks from today uh, would be, let's just confirm, 24th. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, same time. OK. If I'm even at a yes. in uh, Israel, I will leave the meeting and come for this one. Uh, because I'm supposed to be there for uh, a particular convocation. And the first three days are on the apostolic and prophetic track. As late as yesterday, they sent a message just to remind me that I'm supposed to be there for that track before the general one that starts from the 25th to the 9th of October, which obviously I won't stay till the end of all of that. 
but you know i would i'm just saying whatever i'm doing don't let me go into too many details i'll make time mm. all right no, so the lord any announcements you. sorry so the lord will strengthen you uh, he is my strength and help. I came from mm -hmm. another meeting to this meeting. The other day, Thank I you. had a, a deadline that I had to meet concerning something that some people wanted in, uh, uh, what do you call it, Belgium. And I had given my PA to do that, and he did. But they wanted that spruced up. So I had to do that all night. I ended up sleeping at 6.15 a.m., and my wife had to deal with me on that. The Lord is my strength and help. <laughs> yeah, it will make you to be as strong as God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a body has prepared for me. Let me <laughs> let everyone go. Let's end it here. Okay? <laughs> because I thought either Sharon or Yorg or anybody will have an announcement, but nobody is making any more announcements and they're not saying a word. So I, I'm just going to take it that we just close the meeting. All right. All right. Shalom to everyone. So quick, Hello. you were made the, you know, default host when there was a kicking out of the host. So you can close the meeting by just, you know, closing. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom. Hello. 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 Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.
Premium lets you pick and play any song you like without hearing, well, you know, ads. Discover a new sense of self by exploring different musical tastes or simply indulge in the music you know and love without interruptions, just because. Don't miss the last few days to get three months of premium for free. Cancel anytime. Tap the banner to learn more. Trust. 
Somebody just lift your hands and turn in to God right now. That the lifting of our hands should be like the evening sacrifice. Somebody bust out in singing in tongues.
Upgrade to premium and unlock access to ad-free music. That means any playlist or radio station you want without ad interruptions. With radio stations, create a collection of tracks based on the music you love. On any artist, album, song or playlist. Just click go to radio and listen to hours of similar music ad-free with premium. Tap the banner to learn more.
If you promise to abide with me, Lord, then I will serve you for the rest of my life. If you promise to stay with me through all the darkness in life, just give me a word that you stand by me. You're the helper for the helpless. You're the shelter for the homeless.
you, oh God. Nobody else. You It is to see. your word and it's come to pass what our fathers and mothers 